folks, HR Funk here. In past videos, I've referred to lever action rifles as being uniquely American firearms, and I stand by that statement. With a lineage that goes all the way back to the original designs by Messrs. Smith and Wesson, advanced and developed by the likes of Oliver Winchester and John Moses Browning, and eventually proliferated by companies like Marlin, Savage, Browning, and others, the lever action rifle has now been with us for about a century and a half, and it's just as good a tool today as it was when it first saw the light of day. The subject of my video today is the Marlin 336 Cowboy. The 336 Cowboy was part of a family of rifles that Marlin manufactured back around the year 2000 that were intended to have the look and feel of the rifles that the company produced back around the late 19th century. To that end, we have a straight stock with no pistol grip, with a straight lever, a tapered 24 inch octagonal barrel, a full-length tubular magazine with a nine-shot capacity, and the rifle also retains the features of the 336 that are fairly standard, such as the side loading gate, the solid top receiver that's drilled and tapped for a scope. It has very nice checkering, and overall the finish of the 336 Cowboy is very nice. From the factory, the rifle had a good set of marbles elevation adjustable sights, and a drift adjustable front sight to adjust it for windage. I did replace those, however, and part of what made that fairly easy is the fact that the receiver is drilled and tapped for a receiver sight, and I added the Williams aperture sight, which is what I have right here, and I also switched out the front sight for a Lyman globe, and as you can see, this has interchangeable inserts. Currently, I have a crosshair insert, to give a nice fine sight picture. And along with the rear aperture sight, this rifle is capable of very good accuracy. The 336 Cowboy came chambered for two different cartridges. One was the ubiquitous 3030 cartridge, the other, and the chambering for our rifle today, is the 3855 Winchester cartridge. The 3855 Winchester traces its lineage back to 1884 when it was introduced as one of the old Ballard target rifle cartridges. In the intervening 130 odd years, the 3855 has drifted in and out of ammunition catalogs. It is a very good cartridge, very useful cartridge even today. And as a hand loading proposition, which is where it really shines, it can be loaded up to a power factor that's even greater than the 3030. Now I should say at this point, if you're a hand loader, there are a couple of things you have to be aware of with the 3855. First off, if you're loading it in old rifles, in the older late 1800s rifles, make sure you maintain the ballistics of the original black powder loading. Uh, don't try to hot rod it if you're going to be placing it in one of those old rifles. The other thing you have to be aware of is the dimensions of the 3855 cartridge and the chamber of the rifles that fire them and even the rifling dimensions for the land and groove diameters has varied somewhat over the years. So a lot of times it takes a little bit of experimentation to get the best accuracy and, and the biggest thing you have to do is make sure you get the proper bullet diameter for your rifle to be able to give you the best performance. My favorite 3855 load for the 336 Cowboy features a 240 grain hard cast lead bullet that I have loaded to a velocity of about 1500 feet per second. Now before you scoff at that, and I realize by today's standards that's fairly minor ballistics, but before you get too carried away, that's actually exceeding the ballistics of the 44 Magnum cartridge with a bullet that has a higher sectional density as well as a greater ballistic coefficient. So in that light, this is a pretty good deer cartridge even still today. I like to use it to dispatch pests around my house, uh, particularly the ones that walk out of the woods. Some on two legs, some on four legs, you never know. <laughs> but uh, again, just a fun cartridge, fun cartridge to hand load, good ballistics, and in the 336 Cowboy, even though you're pushing that 240 grain bullet at about 1500 feet per second, the recoil impulse is very mild. Okay, folks, that about wraps it up for our discussion of the 336 Cowboy and the 3855 cartridge. Next, we head out to the range and see how it performs. And here we go. And just like that, folks, through the magic of modern technology, we have arrived out at the range. By the way, we're experiencing something of a rarity here this is an actual nice, warm, sunny day in late January in Ohio. We don't get to uh, see that very often around here this time of year.
So I'm going to celebrate our break from the winter weather by shooting a fine rifle. And as soon as I can get things set up and ready to go, we will put the 336 Cowboy through its paces. As I said, the load that I'm using today features a 240 grain hard cast bullet at a velocity of about 1500 feet per second. Now the 336 Cowboy does have Ballard style rifling. It's not Marlin's micro groove. So it's especially well suited for cast bullets. If uh, my memory serves correctly, the twist rate for the rifling is one turn in 18 inches. And again, I have the sights swapped out from what came from the factory with my receiver aperture sight and my Lyman globe front sight. Now one thing about changing the sights or adding the receiver sight is I gain about seven or eight inches in my sight radius over and above what I would have had with the factory installed buckhorn style sight. So anyway, I'm gonna get things set up and ready to go and we'll see how the rifle does. Okay, folks, there's three shots from 100 yards. Let's go see how they look. Okay, two of them are definitely minute of whitetail accuracy. One of them went a little bit high into the left on me. I'm going to go back and put one more shot under this group. I'm assuming I did something wrong with this one, and we'll see if we can close that in a little and take a look at what our three-shot group should be. Let's see if that improved things any. Okay, about a three inch group from 100 yards. Again, with this particular rifle and those sights and my eyes, <laughs> that's not bad. Definitely any deer that I'm shooting at at that distance is going to be very nervous. And pretty much anything else I'm shooting at from that distance is gonna be pretty nervous. So now let's get up off the bench and do some shooting with the 336 Cowboy a little bit more the way it was meant to be shot. Okay, folks, how about three shots standing from 50 yards at our human silhouette target? Let's see how this goes. Okay, let's go have a look. All right, I would say this Pilgrim would have figured out pretty quickly this was not a good place to stand. Those three shots are uh, probably in under three inches, a little over two and a half inches, maybe two and three quarter. Not a bad group, dead center in the target. I'll take them. Folks, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the water bottle desperados are back and they're threatening the good order and sanctity of our fair town with their evil and villainous ways. So let's see if we can use the 336 Cowboy to teach them some manners. Well, we had one of them try to duck and cover and get out of the way, but I managed to get him with the last shot. All right, folks, moment of truth for the 336 Cowboy. Is it attack driver? I'm gonna load up three rounds into the rifle and use those three rounds to try to whack attack from 50 feet. By the way, I've pretty much standardized my distances for shooting at the tacks. With pistols, I try to whack attack from 20 feet. With rifles, I try the same shot from 50 feet. So let's see if the 336 Cowboy is a 50 foot tack driver.
And yes, the 336 Cowboy is a tack driver from 50 feet. I have to be honest, folks, from that distance, I can't tell after I fire whether I'm looking at a bullet hole or if the tack is still there, so I have to walk up and look. But I definitely zapped that tack with the very first shot with the 336 Cowboy, and I'm pretty happy I did. <laughs> so in any regard, the 336 Cowboy is a great rifle, just like pretty much everything in Marlin's 336 line. The 3855 is a great old cartridge, and if you happen to run across this rifle and cartridge combination out there somewhere, you could do a whole lot worse. So that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those below. And as always, until next time, good shooting. Bye-bye.